marry anybody, find out things about them. Love at first sight. Marriage <laughs> is more than love at first sight. They say love is blind. I tell you, marriage is the eye opener. So before you go into a marriage, close one eye in prayer, open the other one in watching. Look very well. Some families, they have history of insanity. You say, what is this woman saying? Is she, not, is she not a woman of faith? Yes, I'm a woman of faith, but not foolishness. It's a difference between presumption, foolishness, and faith. And the reason why I'm saying this is not that I want to dig up your past. It's so that you can know what to do and make an informed decision. You know what prayer to pray. You know the spiritual warfare to do. The grandmother was mad. When you went to greet the father, I was saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that the man you want to marry without being armed? And the man is telling you, when I'm angry, I can do anything. He said, but I saw Angel Fatai appeared to me that is my husband. Uh, Angel Fatai, okay. Hmm. In some families, they hardly stay in their marriages. Find out so that you will know how to do spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is real, very real. I know what obtains in my extended family. I got born again when I was 14. They are very poor in my family. So when I got born again, I began to start this scripture. That's why you can't take sweet sowing from me. I know what it has done for me. I do it out of experience. You can't take it from me. Let, the, let 50 devils rise up. Shh. I know it is by encounter. You notice that in your family, they don't get married until the first daughter is 37. And you sit there, you are snoring, you are not fasting, you are not praying. In some families, it is, they deal with barrenness. They get married. The sister that got married lives in Australia. She's been married for 17 years, no child. The brothers that got married, he's living in Canada, no child, after 13 years. This one, you see the story, the cousin and all that. I'm not saying you will not go into that situation, but you will be armed. Before you go into marriage, you are ready. To battle and to finish the devil's head. You are ready to say Satan. All things are passed away. This blood that flows on my inside now. My deep NA is now Jesus. Generational curses I come against you. I stand upon Zechariah chapter 1. Uh -uh. Let the carpenters remove the heads of whatever is responsible. I know what obtains in my husband's family. His father died as a king. And I know what happened in the palace. Because he married me, I think, two weeks after his father became a king. And the man lived up to 100 years. So I know what I pray for my boys. From my own part, I know how I pray against poverty. And how I sow seed. Once I'm pregnant, I start paying tithes for my child. You will not inherit poverty. So what is in your bloodline? You bring the blood of Jesus to counter it. You don't just say, I love you. And I say, mm -hmm, we're just going to marriage. And some of you even, you get married in churches. We are the kind of words you spoke on your wedding day were so unscriptural. For better, for worse. Where is that in the Bible? In sickness, in poverty, till death do us part. No, it's not scriptural. I take you as my wedded husband in prosperity, in blessing, in sound health, in progress, in great grace. And together we stand against poverty. We stand against till Jesus comes. But if your parents insist that you must come and get married in their church and you want to honor them, let that one just be a ceremony. Make sure that that week you have already approached your pastor, your reverend. Both of you kneel down. Take the vows in his presence. That doesn't mean you will go home and sleep together. You say, at least reverend, you join. No, 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 no. It's spiritual things we are, we are handling here. 
maybe a day or two before the wedding, before the ceremony. So you know that that one will just be a ceremony. The spiritual determines the physical. You know what, is, what battles you are fighting. And one drunk is the one that joined you in one church. Uh, my luck is my busy. And be having children. Marriage is hard work. Marriage sometimes can be a battle because the devil is scared of two destinies coming together. As a single person, marry from your country. Your country man, your country member can live anywhere in the world. But you know this one is in the kingdom. For the spirit beareth witness that we are sons of God. Marry your kindred. Stop running away and hiding it from your pastor. The day you will cry in the palace, there will be nobody to, to help you. Number four. Hmm. The man replied, verse five, and the servant said, I need to know how many more minutes, reverend. And the servant said unto him, peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me. Must I need bring your son again to the land from where you came? Number four, your consent is important. Refuse to be coerced into any relationship. As a young single lady in this city, 13 brothers proposed marriage to me. My husband was the 14th man as a Christian to ask my hand for my hand in marriage. I said that because there were different kinds. One of them came to the house one day. My sister-in-law is here. She was the one preparing the amala. And I just took it from her. I just returned from fellowship. As I was doing the amala, the brother just showed up in our house. Sister Funke, pray. I said, what is it? He said, just say hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. What is it? Before I left the house, I told the Lord that if you are my wife, you should be preparing amala. My husband calls him 419. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody coerce you into marriage. And then the person will now carry one big dex Bible, put under the armpit. As I was sleeping at 3 o'clock, the Lord told me that you are my wife. If you don't agree, woe betide you. Ah. Maybe they don't carry Bible these days. In our days, they used to carry, remember, you remember, carry one big Bible. You know, we are from deeper life background. To carry it, no makeup, nothing. Let the brother will just appear and tell you lie. Mutual consent. The man said, Excuse me, sir. I know you are anointed. I know you are a man of covenant. But in case the woman says she's not coming, he's not just my father who is in heaven, he's our father who is in heaven. Don't let anybody coerce you into marriage. Then they tell you, see the picture. The man is this. The man is that. You get into it. Let me shock you. One man, if I mention his name, all of you will know him. The day he got married, when the man of God pronounced husband and wife, the wife, the bride, turned to him and said, I did this to show the world that in our coven, we could get you. I don't want to give you too much details. All of you know him. The wife said that. Hmm. And as anybody calls you into marriage, your favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. Proverbs 31. But a woman that feared the Lord, or a man that feared the Lord, he or she shall be praised. I like the last phrase of that verse that I just read out to you. My time is almost up. <laughs> okay. He says, Shall I bring your son back to the land where you came from? The fifth thing I want to say is this some marriages have gone back to where they came from because the woman refused to follow, the woman refused to be digested. You are the husband, I'm the wife. You are important, I'm important. Anything that has more than one head is a monster. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care your pedigree. I don't care about how wonderful 
your background is. Once you come into the institution of marriage, there is one head. But that head must understand that he's not a boss, he's a leader. Therefore, no man should boss his wife. No man should lift his hand to beat his wife. No man should dishonor his wife. Ephesians chapter 5 teaches us all that. Many marriages have gone back to where they came from, where their parents came from. Their fathers were polygamists. Their mothers, they didn't have great homes. So their own marriages too have gone back because the husband refused to leave and to cleave. If your life is tied to your mommy's apron, don't bother about marriage. Without mommy, you can't see it. You can't do anything. Don't bother about marriage. We have four biological children. All of them are married. The last one, a, a man, when he got married, it was time to dance with him. When we got to the dance floor, I put my mouth very close to his ears and I told him, from this point, I am no longer the most important woman in your life. I relinquish. Your wife is now more important to you than me. So, I told him a few things. Then he put his mouth close to my ears and he was thanking me for various things and all that. After some time, he began to fan me with his hand. Then suddenly, he pulled back, removed his wedding jacket and began to fan me. I can never forget that till I see Jesus. I was looking at my husband. I said, it's not you they are fanning, it's me. It's me. It's me. Maybe me carry him inside my tummy, you know. I can't forget that all my life. Many marriages have problems today because the man has refused to leave and to cleave. We must visit mommy every day on your way to the office, on your way back. Your wife has no say. It is your auntie. Sometimes some of these relations are demonic and they use remote control. Spiritual things are very real, very real, very, very real. Please watch out. Sometimes some marriages have gone back to what their forefathers used to be because the in-laws have refused to let the couple be. They say, must I bring this, your son back? Abraham said, no way. Don't bring my son back to this place. Oh. Let me mention one more. I'm so sorry, Reverend. I'll come again. <laughs> oh my God. The Bible says in verse 10. Thank you. And the servant took 10 camels of his master and departed. So the sixth, is it the sixth point that I want to make today is prepare for your marital journey. Prepare for your marital journey. That man did not just get there and say, excuse me, I want to take a wife. I'm like, no, he took 10 camels. I wish I had all the time to speak on that. And that talks about in marriage, your financial life. As a man, some things are your basic responsibilities. House rent or accommodation. School fees. Don't let your wife take that over. Some things are basic. The man carried 10 camels. My husband and I, from day one, have been in full-time ministry and full-time business. I am a businesswoman. It's just that some of you don't know that aspect of me. I have businesses, investments. I don't draw salary from church. I don't need it by God's grace. I don't need it. My husband is in full-time business, full-time. So sometimes I just laugh when some people say some things. And I have 400 and something widows on my shoulders. Scholarship. There is a school in Ekiti where I pay the school fees of 20 children without stealing one cover from church. In this city of Ibadan, I learned how to trade. I hugged. I have scar on my head. So I just translated that grace after I became born again. As a man, if every time your wife asks you for money, you are always explaining, no matter how anointed she is, her anointing will turn to annoyance. 
as a single person now, think what can you do? Stop waiting for the government. Salary can never make you wealthy. Sometimes I have a school. And this is one of the things I teach there. Let me give you for, for free. Sometimes you, you sow seed, so you give to your pastor, you give to your prophet, you pay your tithe, you pay your offering, you give to the poor, you do this, and you don't have. And you are wondering, why is it that I give, 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 I don't have? You know why? Because there is no structure. You don't have a structure where the harvest will come. Mike Mudok said, God opened his eyes, he saw many harvests roaming. There's no structure. Apart from salary, what do you do? What do you do? Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, price down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give? Where will they give it to? Asking for financial miracle. I stand to be corrected. Asking and praying every day, every minute. Financial miracle. God, let somebody, while he's buffing now, tell, tell him to come and give me money. Is the prayer of a spiritually immature person. Financial miracles can come, but that shouldn't be your lifestyle. Think. What can you do? Some of you have cities on your inside. Some of you ladies are here. No man should be able to take you for granted. By reason of the gift of God on your inside. Monetize it. I've published 91 books. Every month, Amazon sends money to my account in euro, in dollars, in pounds sterling. Books are on your inside. No wonder you have fight. I didn't get to sex today. I brought 17 things. I shared only six or so with you. From that passage, from verse 1 to 67. It's a whole chapter for seminar. A whole. I, didn't even, I don't think I talked about marriage too much here today. Everyone, you feel that in. Do something. Don't just sit down. 35 years, and then you are waiting to retire without doing anything? What? Money is one of the causes of divorce. Do something. Men, I'm talking to you today. Seriously talking to you. If we have conferences for men where they are trained, there will be no more need for women's conferences. We have had enough in our women's conferences. Only to come back home and meet our men the same. Submit to your husband. Honor your husband. The same man that, sn that snores at 11 a.m. <sighs> the same man that when he finishes sleeping with you, the next thing is to change the gear of his snoring. <sighs> Nobody's talking to him. And these men are rising. And once we begin to rise at a point on the ladder of success, honest opinion diminishes. People can't talk to you. Who will talk to you? Everybody wants your favor. Everybody loves you. You are the CEO. You are everything. So they tip two around you. Nobody can tell you the truth. Nobody. Let me say this to men here. Women are rising. God is blessing them and it is scriptural. When Jesus was going to die, it was women, or it was a woman, or it was womanhood that prepared his body for his death. The way I'm feeling, womanhood will prepare his body for his second coming. We have the alabaster box. TJ preached a message in October. That message changed my life. He called the title incubation. Men don't incubate. It is women that incubate. God is a God of times and seasons and programs. And we are already seeing the signs. What am I saying to the men? You used to say, after I pay school fees. Now, women too can pay school fees. So. so if that is the only strength you have in that marriage, you are gradually going into trouble. After all, I sent them abroad. Women too can afford tickets now. To Dubai at least. So what am I saying? As a man, upgrade. Step up. 
Do something better with your life. Become an employer of labor. Sit down and think and pull out what is on your inside. Start living for posterity. Not just prosperity. Legacy. Legacy. They just showed you that hospital. It took my husband and I about six years to build it. <laughs> we are planning to last. I am gradually setting my life up in a way that after I am dead, if Jesus tarries, I will still be speaking. I am gradually refusing to die as a woman. I want to die as an institution. Start thinking and doing something. Marriage does not end with, ma life does not end with marriage. Your marriage should be a tool in your hand to be a blessing. When we got married, God told us that our home will be a nest for people to rest. As a single person, start thinking now. What do you want to do with that marriage? Bring out a ministry. If every day you quarrel, who will come to look for you for counseling? And married people, maybe like three more minutes. Those of you that are married, I really spoke, I think, the last time I came here to you. Marriage is hard work. Work on your marriage. Leave it as a legacy. Let it be an example for your children. Let your home be a point of reference. Let people use your marriage to pray to God that their marriages will be like yours. But it is hard work. There are things a woman wants and there are things a man wants. Any marriage that we break will go through these seven stages. Number one, honeymoon stage. Number two, normal life stage. Number three, criticism stage. Number four, fighting stage. Number five, separation stage. Oh, some of you are not writing. Even. Or are you writing? Okay. Number one, honeymoon stage. If the marriage will break, every marriage goes through that. Number two, reality stage. Hey! So this is how you really are. So your bra can be dirty. So your socks can smell. So you snore when you sleep. So your breast is like this. Reality is normal. Number three, criticism. If that marriage is going to break, you start criticizing subjectively. Not for good. And once that criticism starts, you are becoming too fat. So the woman will tell you, you saw me like that before you married me. Oh. So don't come and be causing trouble here. All sorts will be happening. So you move from that criticism state to fighting stage. Including Christian homes. From fighting stage, you move to avoidance stage. How are you? Fine. I was going to bless. Uh, one word. So gradually you begin to have mommy's room or madame's bedroom. And uh, master bedroom. Number six, you have separation stage. And finally, divorce stage. No marriage breaks overnight. It goes through these seven stages. But it doesn't matter how far the devil has gone. He can be stopped. Little, 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 little things. That if I had the time, I would have shown you from that um, Genesis chapter 24. But please work on, on your marriage. Little, 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 little things. Small, small, small things. The way you speak. Thank you, sir. I have in that note seven. No, I have in that note seven subtle ways by which you cheat your spouse. And you may not know it. I have in that note seven ways by which you cheat your spouse. You know one of them. I'll give you only one so that Reverend can bring me back. <laughs> I was just joking. Spending more time with your phone than your spouse. You can relate. You feel me, Abby? Yeah. I have seven. I've only given you one. Spending more time with your phone. Sorry, sorry, dear. Sorry, dear. I'm going to post on Instagram. Sorry, dear. Sorry, dear. Sorry, dear. Sorry, dear. I'm replying this way. Sorry, dear. You won't believe it. 
The next time you are at the airport, just look around. Just look around. Everybody's on their phones. International airport, you won't believe their husband and wife. Everybody. He's killing marriages. What's up? Ah, how many groups do you belong to? He's killing marriages. These are the end times. Marriage is hard work. Fight for your marriage. The Lord bless you.